Welcome back. The month of September is observed as Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. This is the second most common form of cancer among women between 15 and 44 years of age in South Africa. More than 95% of cases are caused by human papilloma virus, which is the most common viral infection of the reproductive tract. To explore this, I'm now joined by Dr. Trudy Smith, gyno-oncologist from the Witz Donald Gordon Medical Center, to speak about the newly available non-avalent HPV vaccine. Now, uh, Dr. Smith, before we get into uh, the details about the vaccine, thank you so much for speaking to us on Newsnight tonight. And I, I want to try and understand what the stats look like, because saying it's the second most common form of cancer among women in South Africa between 15 and 44 is one thing, but in understanding how many women in South Africa are affected by this is a completely different thing. So approximately 6,000 women per year die from cervical cancer. So it might be the second commonest cancer in South Africa, second to breast. But in fact, more women die of cervical cancer than women die of breast cancer. It is an entirely 100% preventable disease. Uh, it's preventable, firstly, by vaccinating young girls and even older women, but also by going for cervical screening. And so in terms of these 6,000 women annually who die, uh, what percentage of, of women have perfectly treatable uh, cervical cancers? So unfortunately, in our country, the majority of women present very late. So in other words, they present with stage three and even stage four disease. So the management of these women becomes very difficult because they require radiation therapy and uh, chemotherapy, which is um, not always available to many women. And so if you present very early, it is manageable and treatable. So, you know, unfortunately, a lot of women get to us very late. And so I suppose if treatment is so difficult and many women are coming to you late, then prevention is absolutely 100% better than cure. So, so let's talk about the developments with this HPV vaccine. What's new? Because it's been around for decades and we've had a very uh, successful HPV uh, vaccination program initiated for a number of years in school, public schools. Uh, so what's changed? It's so first of all, um, we've had a little bit of fallout from that vaccination during COVID because obviously many young girls weren't going to school. And you're right, we have a government vaccination program where young girls in the last year of their primary school have two um, shots. So what has developed now is that there is a vaccine that contains more HPV types. So the um, older vaccines contain HPV 16 and 18, which certainly are the two commonest kinds that um, cause 70% of cervical cancers. But there is now what's called a, a nine-valent vaccine, and that nine-valent vaccine contains two of the HPV types that cause genital warts. The two commonest ones, the 16 and the 18, but five extra ones. So therefore giving us more protection, more cover, because the vaccine's not 100%. Mm. Um, you know, the ones that are available covered you for approximately 70% of the acquisition of HPV. But remember, that still doesn't mean you don't go for screening. So screening also still remains uh, an important thing because we treat precancerous conditions in order to prevent the cancer. In the South African context, it's also very important to talk between, about the link between HIV and HPV. Explain that to us. So um, the, the, the thing with HIV and HPV is that if you are HIV positive, um, you develop cancer or cervical cancer 10 years earlier than women who are HPV negative. And that's really just about um, viral load, is decreasing your viral load, being able to fight against viruses in general. So it's not necessarily that everybody with HPV is going to be HIV and vice versa, except we do know that women who are HIV positive, their cervical cancers occur 10 years younger than women who are HIV negative. 
So this, uh, this new uh, vaccine uh, strain with the, with the extra protection against more strains of HPV is, is going to be a game changer for us here in South Africa. Is it available and is that going to be you know, worked into our existing school uh, vaccination program? So for South Africa, it's new. It is available in South Africa. It is not um, in our um, government EPI. In other words, um, the one that still exists in the in the routine vaccination is the bivalent vaccine, the one with 16 and 18. And we hope that that will change. But obviously, you know, the the nine valent comes at a more expensive cost than the bivalent. So those are things that certainly need to be discussed. In terms of accessing, you said older women can also uh, be vaccinated. I think when I was in school, the, the HPV the vaccine just didn't exist yet. So w what are sort of the protocols for, for older women well, to get vaccinated? So if you're looking at bang for your buck, you know, if you want to do a national vaccination program, obviously you want to vaccinate young girls prior to acquisition of HPV. But certainly, um, you know, older women would benefit as well. If you have pre-existing HPV disease, it's not going to treat. And I must emphasize it will not treat your current HPV or persistent HPV infection that you might have. But certainly um, it would cover the other kinds that you may not have. So if you're looking at a national program, you definitely need to vaccinate young girls. And in fact, this vaccine is licensed for boys as well. But um, on a national level, we vaccinate girls before boys. But you certainly may uh, vaccinate boys as well. Just talking about screening, because I mean, it. Screening is absolutely part of the program. You can't do vaccinations without regular screenings. How many South African women have access to annual uh, gynecological screenings that would cover HPV tests? So, in fact, you don't need to go for an annual cervical um, screen. You know, our new guidelines suggest that uh, we would screen for primary HPV infection. And if you were HPV negative, then, um, you know, human papillomavirus negative, then you only need to be screened every three to five years, depending on your HIV status. So uh, in the old days, you used to, um, people would say, oh, why aren't you going for an annual smear? But in fact, we know that an annual smear is probably... Um, uh, not as sensitive as having primary HPV testing, which we are hoping to introduce. You know, our current guidelines within the South African sector for the general population is um, to be screened uh, at, you know, three every 10 years is what our government guidelines say. Um, from a cervical cytology, in other words, a pap smear. But now we're going to start screening for human papillomavirus. So if you are HPV negative, then you would be screened every three to five years. Thank you so much uh, for your valuable insights and your expertise. Uh, we really do appreciate it as we uh, observe uh, Cervical Cancer Awareness Month in September. That was Dr. Trudy Smith, gynae oncologist from the Bits Donald Gordon Medical Center.